Wow, I've never seen a moon like this. Tis known as a pirate's moon and happens but once every 100 years. <gasps> Shiver me, whiskers, the flying swords! Flying swords? Aye, according to legend, tis only on the night of the rare pirate moon when cold ocean waters turn warm that ye may be lucky enough to see the flying swords. They're a sign, me hearties, that you are near a sunken pirate ship where X marks the spot of the greatest treasure ye could ever hope to find. The Sword of the Pirate King! But any pirate who hopes to take it as his own must be brave indeed, because the Sword of the Pirate King is guarded by three magical flying swords. Me granddad always wanted to find that treasure. Alas, he never had the chance. But now I do! Arr, are we going to look for the Pirate King Sword, matey? Not we, Peso. Tis a mission I need to go on alone. For the honor of me granddad, Calico Jack. I understand. Good luck, Quasi. We'll follow your progress from the octopod. A sunken ship. This could be it. Well done, Quasi. Keep us posted. I'm going after that sword, me hearties. Oh, these freezing waters are shivering me whiskers. Oh, what a glorious ship. The Pirate King! The sword is as good as mine. Strange. The water just got warmer. This is definitely it! Quasi! Come in, Quasi! We've lost contact, Captain. His radio's been damaged. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert! Octonauts, to the launch bay! Octonauts, we've lost radio contact with Quasi. He may be hurt or in trouble. Dashy, keep trying to radio him. Peso, into the guppe with me. Tweak, open the octo hatch. Got it, Cap. <sighs> Quasi to Octopod. Come in, me hearties. Ah, me radio's broken. But I've still got a Pirate King sword to find. <laughs> okay now, where's that X that marks the spot? <gasps> that warm water again. Yow! A flying sword. Yow! <laughs> No telling where more of these magical flying swords might be lurking. Ah! Here I am! No, oh, over here! No, down here, matey! Arr! Two down, one to go! There he is, Captain. Hang on, Peso. This could get a bit rocky. Something tells me that the X that marks the spot is right behind this now! Aha! The last one! Stand aside, ya scurvy sword! Magic ye may be, but quick enough to catch this pirate? Never! Captain, I've lost sight of him. Looks like he's inside the kelp forest. Quasi! <gasps> Look! Quasi! <gasps> it's not Quasi! We've been chasing a figurehead! One that could only have come off a pirate ship! But then, where's Quasi? Ha <laughs> ha! Outran him! <laughs> so, it's a duel you're wanting, is it? Then it's a duel ye shall have! 
I'm a swordfish. What did you think I was? Uh, a magic flying sword? <laughs> the only flying me and my fellow fish do is when we leap out of the ocean. Uh, so that was you. The light of the pirate moon made it look like it. Do I care what it looked like? No. What I do care about is uh, this is our feeding ground and we want you gone. Ha! I don't want your food, matey! I want the sword of the Pirate King! And if you think I'm leaving without it, you don't know much about pirates! And uh, you, my friend, don't know much about swordfish, or you would think twice about fighting us! We live by the sword! We use it for swimming first! Slashing at our food! And defending ourselves! Ha -ha! All done. Fit as a fiddlefish. Here's your last patient, Peso. And how are you today? Crabby. Because, well, I'm a crab and my shell hurts. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. Let's take a look. Now, don't be nervous. This X-ray viewer just lets me see inside your shell. Aha! You've got a small stone in there, Captain. May I? Oh, that's better. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. What's that? Young sperm whale, and he looks like he needs help. Hello, are you all right? My name is. Oh, oh no, don't hurt me! Don't be scared. I'm here to help. Oh, get, get, get away! But I. Show your teeth and do your worst. We're not afraid of a little whale like you. Yeah. Sperm whales, we are not here to fight. We are the Octonauts. Captain, it looks like we're outnumbered. Maybe not. Octonauts to the HQ. Octonauts were surrounded by a pod of angry sperm whales. We've got to work out why and fast. Shellington, take a look. <gasps> Jumping jellyfish. They're humongous beasts with humongous teeth. Sperm whales don't bite or use their teeth to eat. They sometimes show them to protect their young, but only when they think they're in danger. Oh, 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 Walker! Captain, young sperm whales are afraid of orcas. I don't see any orca. Hmm. Neither do I. But I wonder if... Peso? Me? <laughs> Him? Dashi, send me a picture of a... Orca? Already on it, Captain. Sperm whales, there's been a misunderstanding. Peso is not an orca. He's a penguin. You thought he was an orca? <laughs> oh, he is black and white like an orca. But he's tiny. We never had a chance for a proper hello. We are the Octonauts. I hope you're not still scared. Probably. Scary Simon is scared of everything. <laughs> Will you dive down with us this time, Simon? Oh, no! Oh. oh, they're right. I'm scared of everything. Especially diving. What's so important about diving? All sperm whales dive deep down in the ocean to find food. Except him. <laughs> I'll never learn to dive. 
I keep thinking I can do it, but I can't. It's too deep. Ah, oh, it's deep and dark and scary, but that's what makes it an adventure, me hottie. Ooh. Did I say something wrong? You know, I happen to know someone who's a champion diver. You do? Who? Peso. Penguins have to learn to dive too. But when I was little, I was scared to dive, just like you. Oh, you really think you could teach me? I don't see why not, unless you still think I'm an orca. <laughs> no. This shouldn't take long, Captain. <laughs> Quasi and I'll head back to the octopod. Radio us when you need a lift home. Good luck, matey. Simon, I've just remembered something. When I was learning to dive, there was a little trick that helped me not be afraid. Oh, what was it? Right before the dive, I would take a deep breath and then close my eyes tight. <sighs> I think you mean clowns. Shiver me whiskers! We'll have to search shell by shell. Peso? 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 Ah! Whoa! Try the X-ray viewer. Clam. Clam. Another clam. We have some amazing photos of Antarctic sea life, thanks to the new cameras on the gaps, Captain. Excellent, Dashi. And who knows what else we might find today? <laughs> Monsters in the ocean! Swim for your lives! Monsters? Three of them at least! The one I saw was just a giant head with teeth! The one I saw was a giant squirmy sea serpent! The one I saw, I couldn't even see the whole thing! That's how huge it was! And where exactly did you spy these hideous creatures of the deep? Close by! Gotta keep moving! We don't want to run into those monsters again! <laughs> Three monsters! Peso, Quasi, let's investigate. All right, everyone, keep your eyes peeled. And make sure your gup cams are turned off. just saw what appears to be a big-headed monster, exactly like the one described by the first dolphin. Huh? I just saw the sea serpent monster the other dolphin saw. Ah, just me luck. 
I haven't seen hiding a fin of anything monstrous. It, but I do now. It's the big one, mateys, and she's coming right at me. Was he? Oh, shiver me whiskers. Let's see what the photos from the gub cans can tell us. That's the monster I saw. Yes, and that's the one I saw. And that big whatever it is, is the third monster. Hmm, I'm not so sure there were three monsters. Let me try something. It's a crocodile. It's a saltwater crocodile. The world's largest crocodile. It's as big as a bus. And it's a long way from home. Saltwater crocodiles normally live in places like Australia. That's over a thousand miles away. Hmm. It's not unusual for saltwater crocodiles to travel far out to sea looking for food. But I've never heard of one spotted in the Antarctic Ocean. Oh no, he must be lost. And freezing. Saltwater crocodiles are reptiles. They stay healthy by moving to different places when they need to warm up or cool down. If they get too hot, they move to a cooler place. And if they get too cold, they move to a warmer place. But here in the Antarctic, there's no place he can go to warm up. He won't be able to survive this extreme cold for long. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have a saltwater crocodile who is lost and in danger from the icy cold water. Our mission is to find him and take him home. Quasi, peso, to the guts. Remember, Octonauts, this is a huge creature we're looking for. If it feels threatened or scared, it may attack us. Aye, and the way it nearly swatted me gut, that tail could crush us like a tin can. It would more likely chomp you with its massive jaws and teeth. Keep a sharp lookout, me hearties. That croc could be lurking anywhere. Below us, behind us, or above us. What happened? He might be injured. Let's take a closer look. He's not moving. He doesn't seem to be breathing. I've got to find out what's wrong. We'll back you up, Peso. Shellington, stand by to assist. He's got a heartbeat, but very soft and slow. Shellington, any idea what's going on with him? Yes, Captain. When saltwater crocodiles get very cold, their bodies can slow down and go into a kind of sleep where they don't need to eat or breathe air for a long time. So, he'll be fine. After he wakes up, he'll head home. The saltwater crocodile might not know his way home, Quasi, and he may not be able to wake up at all because of the extreme cold. We need to get him back to the octopod and warm him up. But he's too big to fit through the octahatch. I wasn't thinking of bringing him inside the octopod. Octonauts, prepare to warm up a saltwater crocodile. The croc's attached to the octopod cap. He's as snug as a bug. A really big bug. And this will tell us how he's doing. Good. Hey, so stay with him. Everyone else, back to the ship. Dashi, raise the temperature of the octopod as hot as you can get it. Hot. And set a course for the saltwater crocodile's home in Australia. Captain, it's working. The crocodile's body temperature is warming up. He's not the only one. It's as hot as the Amazon jungle in here. More relaxing than a moonlight drive. Flying fish. So you want to race, do ye? You're on. A buzz, Wow! A 
been hit. It's a snake attack. Yeah. Ah, show yourself, you scurvy coconut. Ah. Uh, Blubbering, blowfish! It's the mark of my grandfather, Calico Jack. Something's inside! <gasps> Very treasure! Let's crack it open and see what's inside! Hmm. I think this calls for my newest invention, the Octo Claw! This little beauty will crush or crack almost anything, including coconuts. Yow! Now let's try it on Calico Jack's coconut. Still trying to open this coconut, eh? I don't get it. My Octoclaw should have done the job. I modeled it after the greatest coconut cracker in the animal world, the coconut crab. Maybe that's who we need to help, um, crack this mystery. Quasi, sound the Octo Alert. Ow! Octonauts to the HQ. <laughs> Octonauts, we need to find a way to open up Calico Jack's coconut. We'll need the help of the greatest coconut cracker of all. Shellington? Ah, yes, the coconut crab, the largest land crab in the world. It has powerful pincer claws used for cracking open coconuts. Where can we find these crabs? You'll need to look on an island. Coconut crabs live strictly on land. This shows all the islands in the area, Captain. Hmm. Zoom in on that one, Dashie. It's crawling with coconut trees. Exactly. And where there are coconut trees, there are usually... Coconut crabs! Tweak, ready the Gup X. Oh, it's straight ahead, Cap. Coconut crabs only come out at night. We don't want to scare them off. Tweak, activate stealth mode. You got it, Cap. Hmm, not a crab to be seen. Maybe we need some bait to get them to come out. There. No, over there. <gasps> the coconut. It's gone. Tweak. Spotlight. Nothing. Let's take a closer look. Octonauts, let's search the area. I'll head right. Quasi, you head left and... I'll stay right here with the penguin. The name's Claude, but my friends call me the Claw. On account of the fact that I like to crack coconuts open with it. But I'm not a coconut. Ah, sorry. Don't worry, you're not very crackable. <laughs> Hello, darling. But there's my wife, Claudette. But her friends call her... The Claw! These here are my sons, Clive, Clem and Clarence. But you can call us... The Claws? Uh, yeah. How did you guess? Yeah, how'd you guess? Oh, I want to thank you all for finding this here coconut of ours. Rolled into the ocean days ago, and since we can't swim, we couldn't go after it. Now, if you don't mind, we'll be taking it on home where it belongs. Just drop anchor right there. That's my coconut. Now, hold on, son. This coconut's belonged to us for many years, so it stays with us. Yeah, yeah, it stays with us. But that very same coconut bears the mark of my grandfather, Calico Jack. <gasps> you and Calico Jack are family? Oh, well, uh, now that you mention it, you do kind of look like him. Thanks. So maybe you'd like to tell me how you ended up with my grandfather's coconut. It was many years ago that Calico Jack washed up on the shores of this here very island. 
He was shipwrecked and hungry. We nursed him back to health with coconut milk, and in return, he told us rip-roaring tales of the open sea. When we woke, he was gone. No note, no nothing. Just this coconut, which we've been trying to crack open ever since. It's downright embarrassing. I mean, cracking coconuts is what we do. Yeah, it's what we do. Well, we couldn't crack it, and you couldn't crack it. Perhaps if we work together, we can all crack it. Then let's get cracking! <laughs> <laughs>